Hello. So this is beer batter on the uh, mock forum and primarily making this video for my brother who uh, who has been collaborating with me on a lot of this 3D stuff. But um, this is a this is my third attempt at making this video. And although I'm pretty good at making parts, I super suck at making videos. Uh, not liking that part at all. So uh, here's another attempt. But anyways, this is my uh, little CNC machine, do-it-yourself CNC machine that I have a little Dremel on. I hope to put a real spindle on it here eventually. Um, but I added the, a fourth axis temporarily to see if I could maybe turn this thing into a 3D printer. So I'm doing some experiments. I got a small sure separate drive back here. Um, running off a 24 volt power supply over here. And that's all tied into a little breakout board that I made um, to bring out all the pins from my smooth stepper out of this machine so I don't have to keep going in here. So now I can do all my experimentation with my extra input and output pins off of this little breakout board here. So that's working out real well. Um, so finally got the fourth axis installed there. I got the small NEMA 17 motor that'll work as an extruder uh, temporarily here just for testing. Eventually I'll have a real extruder on this thing now. Now that I know it works, I can go spend some money on the parts that I need for the 3D printer. Um, so first challenge was getting the fourth axis in this machine installed and running. That took me about a day. Ran into a few few headaches there. Um, and then I'm running Mach 4, which had a whole nother process of trying to figure out how to you know, use Mach 4 as a 3D printing utility to run the G-code that comes out of all these slicing programs, but I finally figured it all out. Um, so I've got this little impeller that I made in Fusion 360, just a quick little impeller and an extrusion, and then from Fusion 360 I uh, exported an STL file, and then that STL file I brought into the slicer program um, called Slicer. It's a free open source program available on the internet. Really nice little tool. Brought the STL into that. And that let me set up all of the printer, 3D printer parameters and um, and how I was going to export the G-code, how to post-process it. So I set all that up in Slicer, spit out the G-code file, and then brought the G-code file into Mach 4. Um, and that's what I'm running now. I guess not. Alright, got an incoming call on my phone, cut my video off. Got to get me a real video camera if I'm going to get into this video stuff. Using a telephone is not going to, a cell phone isn't going to cut it. So, okay, here back to Mach 4. And where was I? I brought it in here. Oh, setting up Mach 4 for, uh, as a 3D printer. Some challenges there, getting, getting the E-axis from... Uh, most of the slicers mapped over to Mach 4 and uh, if you see in the G code here um, What I'm actually doing is in the slicer program I figured out how to map that over there so it spits out the extruder axis as the A axis and The A axis is real easy to implement here in Mach. I didn't have to map it over Didn't have to map E to C or C to A or whatever. I just did it all in slicer mapped to my fourth axis A um, the other big trick to this that will kill your machine if you aren't aware of it is that all these slicer programs assume that the output's in millimeters. The code itself is unitless, but, it, uh, but it's all calculated to be in terms of millimeters. I know that's weird, unitless, but it's intended to be millimeters, and that's what it is. So I've got a, this little machine here, since it's set up in Mach 4, is an imperial units machine in inches. So the trick to all that is that you got to put a G21, I think it was, um, in the G code right at the top to tell it that in, to interpret all the numbers in the G code file as millimeters, and then the inter the G code interpreter will automatically do all of the conversions for you. So that's uh, once I did that, it solved everything. And what's neat about it is that Mach 4 knows that it's 
because of that G21, it puts the correct units up in the DRO, which I found really helpful. Because all of the printer stuff is in millimeters, like the bed size and things like that, and so it's a lot easier to relate back to the printer itself if it's in metric. Um, so there it is. Uh, the white is the is is the part that it's printing, so the actual tool path that it's generating as it's printing, and then the green is the uh, the actual uh, model. Or the green is the tool pass and the white is what the machine is actually tracing as the tool path. So in the end, these two should pretty much overlap. So there it is. Um, next step is going to go to going to be to go and order uh, an extruder, a hot end, and a hot bed or a hot print uh, plate, and then a temperature controller for the hot end and the hot plate and the next fun challenge is going to be to hopefully try and get all that control from Mach because there's a bunch of custom G codes that the 3D industry has uh, has created in the in the group of M what is it M100 to M199 or all custom M codes I'm sorry custom M codes and they've implemented a lot of those for 3D specific functions and I want to try and get the temperature control ones and the fan, the uh, the cooling fan control stuff, all being able to be operated from Mach, and I finally figured out that you can do that with Luol scripts. So we're gonna make that happen. All right, everybody, talk to you later.